Usually when I sit down to review something, it's right here on the table in front of me because by that point, I've already put it through its paces, compiled the results, taken my notes, and now I'm just wrapping it up before shoving it or giving it away. Let, let's be real, there are only so many mini PCs, NAS units, PC cases, or 3D printers one guy can actually use. But today, there's just an empty box. That's because the thing I'm reviewing is already hard at work inside my house. The TP-Link Deco BE-1000 Wi-Fi 7 mesh system has officially replaced my old home network and is now the backbone connecting dozens of devices across my home to the internet and to each other. So yeah, that might spoil a bit of where this review is headed, but hang tight because we're still gonna unbox it and run it through the specs and features, go step-by-step -step through setup, wiring it into the modem and network switch, creating the mesh, connecting devices, and finally, testing the real-world performance against the default ISP Wi-Fi gear it replaced. And by the end, you'll find out if setting up your own DIY mesh Wi-Fi 7 network is actually worth ditching those monthly rental fees for good. It's the money. Now, if you're someone who appreciates a little unboxing experience with your new tech, TP-Link delivers without going overboard. The packaging is minimal, mostly recyclable, and nicely organized. Opening the box reveals each of the three Deck OBE 63 units neatly cradled in cardboard inserts. A simple pull tab lifts them out. Up front, there's a compartment with three compact wall warp power supplies, a flat ethernet cable, and a quick start guide. All three Deco BE63 units are identical and make up the BE1000 whole home mesh Wi-Fi 7 system. They're a bit smaller than my old access point. Each one measures about 107 millimeters in diameter and stands 137 millimeters tall. Around back, you will find the power input, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 port for connecting external storage, giving you basic network attached storage for backups or file sharing, and four 2.5 GBE ports that can be used for wired LAN connections or dedicated backhaul. There's also a WPS button for legacy IoT devices that still rely on it. The Deco BE-1000 is a tri-band Wi-Fi 7 mesh system, and on paper, the numbers sound massive, up to 10,000 megabits per second of total wireless bandwidth, but let's break that down into something that actually matters. You've got three separate wireless lanes, a six gigahertz band, a five gigahertz band, and a legacy 2.4 gigahertz band. The six gigahertz band is where the Wi-Fi 7 magic happens. It supports ultra wide 320 megahertz channels and 4K QAM modulation. Fancy terms, but what it means is blazing fast, multi gigabit speed for supported devices at close and medium range. That includes newer phones, laptops, and desktops. The five gigahertz band is your everyday workforce. It doesn't hit the same peak speeds, but it handles distance and obstacles better. So it'll carry most of your current Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7 devices without issue. And then there's the 2.4 gigahertz band. Yeah, it's, it's slow, but it's still important for smart home gear that just needs a reliable connection to exist. What really sets Wi-Fi 7 apart though are the multi-link features. The Deco BE-1000 supports multi-link operation, which allows supported devices to connect to more than one band simultaneously. Think of it like driving in two lanes at once. You get more bandwidth, lower latency, and better connection stability as you move around the house. It also supports multi-RUs, which lets the router schedule airtime more efficiently, so even when you've got dozens of devices chatting at once, everything stays smooth and responsive. All of this is built on top of a redesigned Wi-Fi 7 stack, wider channels, denser data packing, and smarter traffic control. And while it doesn't always result in mind-blowing speed increases, it absolutely delivers a more stable, responsive, and capable network, especially in busy modern homes packed with smart devices. Let's jump into setting this thing up. I'll cover more features as we go, but first I wanna walk you through how I actually fielded this system. The first thing to understand is that the Deco BE-1000 is a Wi-Fi router, not a modem or full service access point. So if you replace something like this Xfinity XB8 combo unit, you'll still need a separate modem. In my case, I picked up a Doxis 3.1 cable modem, which takes the incoming coaxial signal from the wall and turns it into usable internet. This one was certified by 
by my ISP and I was able to get it activated quickly using my Xfinity app. With the modem live, it was time to install the Wi-Fi system itself. That's all handled through the Deco app. And honestly, the QR code to download the app is about the only guidance you'll find in the user manual. From there, setup was smooth. All three BE63 units are identical. So I just grabbed one, plugged it in and followed the step-by-step -step prompts in the app. If you've ever set up a modern smart home device, this will feel familiar. During the process, I connected the Deco to the modem, chose a network name and password, and the system took care of most of the configuration automatically. One once the main unit was up and running, adding the satellite units was dead simple. I just carried one to another room, plugged it into the wall, and, and that was it. It automatically connected back to the main unit using wireless backhaul. No cables needed, no extra setup. Now, just to clarify, backhaul is the connection between your mesh nodes. It's how they stay linked together behind the scenes to act as a unified network. It can be wireless, wired, or a combo of both. And the faster and more stable that link is, the better your overall network performance will be. In my case, wireless backhaul is a necessity. My home was built in the 90s with no ethernet wiring at all, and I've since discovered that nearly every wall has fire blocking or horizontal bracing inside, so retrofitting ethernet drops isn't just a hassle, it's a full-on renovation project. That's why I needed a mesh system with rock-solid wireless backhaul, and thankfully the BE-1000 handles it really well. That said, if you do have Ethernet runs between rooms, you can take advantage of wired backhaul for maximum performance, and if you got some wired and some wireless areas, the Deco supports hybrid backhaul too. It's smart enough to combine both and route traffic along the most efficient path automatically. That kind of flexibility makes it easy to build your network around the layout and limitations of your home, whether you've got a fully wired infrastructure, nothing but drywall, or some weird mix in between. Now, eventually, I'll probably run a second ethernet line down to my basement to give the router a hardwire uplink, but while running a cable to the third floor is technically possible, it's never gonna happen. So instead I designed and 3D printed a wall mount bracket for the third unit and placed it in a spot with direct line of sight to the primary deco. From there, it can also see all three bedrooms in the computers inside, so there's nothing blocking the six gigahertz band, which means fast, clean, wireless performance. And if by chance you're interested in that wall mount, I've shared the STL file over on my Patreon. With the whole house system mesh set up and running, there were still a few tweaks I wanted to make to get the most out of it. First up was the network optimization tool in the Deco app. This scans for competing wireless signals in the area and automatically selects the best channel for each of the three Wi-Fi bands. Once happened, the system reconfigured itself for cleaner, faster wireless performance. Next, I enabled the IoT network. This creates a separate 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network just for smart home devices. Things like cameras, doorbells, smart plugs, thermostats, and all my various Alexa speakers, it let me isolate those devices from the main network, which adds a layer of security and keeps the main lanes clear for higher bandwidth devices. After that, I turned on the MLO network multi-link operation. Like I mentioned earlier, this allows Wi-Fi 7 devices to connect across multiple bands at once. That means better throughput, lower latency, and more stable connections on newer phones, laptops, and PCs that support it. Then came the real test, reconnecting all my devices to the new network. That took an entire afternoon. If I were smarter, I would have just reused my old SSID and password, but honestly, it was time for a fresh start security-wise. Of course, not everything in my house is wireless. I've also got several devices that rely on wired connections, and the BE-1000 gives me a few different ways to handle that. Each Deco 63 unit includes four 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. On the main unit, one of those is connected to the cable modem, and another goes to my multi-gig network switch. That switch connects the 10 GBE ports on my Mac Studio and main server, as well as a secondary switch here in my studio. After a quick reboot, all my wired devices grabbed fresh IP addresses and connected flawlessly. Even my storage server showed up using its device name without needing to reconfigure anything. Now, in my case, the network switch gives me blazing fast 10 GBE link between my primary workstations and server. But even if you're not running a dedicated switch, each Deco unit can act as a basic switch thanks to those built-in 2.5 GBE ports. And yes, 
even when using wireless backhaul, those ethernet ports still work for wired LAN devices. For example, I wired the basement TV directly into one of those satellite units. That TV has a notoriously unreliable Wi-Fi radio, but through the Deco's wired port, it now has a rock solid connection. Since the satellite connects to the main unit wirelessly, I'm not getting full 2.5 gigabit speeds, but the devices down here only have gigabit LAN anyway. If I ever want the full speed, I can run a dedicated ethernet line to that satellite for a wired backhaul connection. That's definitely on my someday list. Oh, and I also plugged in an old USB drive into the Deco USB port. Once I enabled it in an app, it instantly showed up on my Mac as a basic network attached storage device. It's not blazing fast, but it's a simple way to share files or stash backups without adding a full NAS to the setup. So what kind of speed improvements does upgrading to Wi-Fi 7 actually bring? Well, coming from a solid Wi-Fi 6E setup, the gains aren't mind blowing, but they're noticeable and measurable. For starters, I have 2.5 gigabit per second internet service. With the new cable modem and a wired connection to the Deco unit, I'm able to nearly saturate that bandwidth on both of my primary workstations, a Mac Studio and a Windows desktop. No complaints there. For wireless testing, I used my Ryzen AI 300 Series Framework 13 laptop, which originally had a MediaTek RZ616 Wi-Fi 6E adapter. On the old single access point setup, I ran and multiple speed tests around the house. Internet download speeds ranged anywhere from 946 megabits per second down and 250 up, all the way to just 537 down and 150 up, depending on the location. Now, plenty of variables can affect internet speed tests, so to isolate local performance, I also ran file transfers to my Unraid server over the same Wi-Fi connection and locations. Those tests showed write speeds from a high 54 megabytes per second down to just 29, with read speeds ranging from 71 to 172 megabytes per second. After upgrading to Wi-Fi 7, I also swapped out the RZ616 for MediaTek's RZ717 Wi-Fi 7 adapter. Unfortunately, for testing purposes, that upgrade was mostly symbolic. The RZ717 may say Wi-Fi 7 on the box, but in practice, it still maxes out at 160 megahertz hertz channel widths and just like the older RZ616 and doesn't support multi-link operation and that's a big deal. The two most important upgrades in Wi-Fi 7 are wider 320 megahertz channels and multi-link capability. Without either of those, the RZ717 performs pretty much like its predecessor. So on a full Wi-Fi 7 mesh network, the client becomes the bottleneck. Still, I saw noticeable improvements, not just in peak speed. What changed was consistency. After the upgrade, I saw stable download speeds between 850 and 900 megabits per second and upload speeds consistently in the 300 to 350 megabit range, no matter where I was in the house. Transfers to my server also improved with write speeds consistently around 65 megabytes per second and reads hitting 180 megabytes per second. Again, stable across all test locations. While the RZ717 didn't deliver much for AMD systems, I also upgraded my Intel-based Framework 12 laptop with the new Intel BE200 Wi-Fi 7 adapter, which does have 320 megahertz channels and multi-link capability. I haven't had time to run full tests yet, but it is the first client device on my home network to consistently break the one gigabit per second download barrier over wireless. And that's promising. But the biggest upgrade, the one everyone in my house noticed, was the overall stability and responsiveness of the network. My teenagers haven't once complained about the basement TV dropping connections or hanging during streams. And while their gaming PCs aren't upgraded to six gigahertz adapters yet, they've already mentioned the big drop in lag. Maybe now they'll stop asking me to tear up drywall and run ethernet drops everywhere. One last improvement I want to highlight is the Internet of Things network. On my old ISP provided access point, the 2.4 gigahertz band was flaky at best. Smart plug security cameras and other devices were constantly dropping offline. With the Deco system, I haven't seen a single dropout yet. It hasn't been a full week, but that alone is already a huge win.
So to wrap this up, this was my first hands-on review of a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system. I've worked with plenty of network gear and know my way around routers and LAN setups, but I don't have a stack of competing Wi-Fi 7 systems on hand to run side-by-side -side tests. That said, TP-Link's Deco BE-1000 did exactly what it claimed to do. It gave me a fast, stable, and reliable home-home wireless network, and it handled the upgrade process with zero headaches. In terms of how it compares to the rest of the market, it's actually in a really interesting spot. On the high end, you've got systems like the Netgear Orbi 970 and TP-Link's own Deco BE95. Those come loaded with quad band support, 10 gigabit ports and all the bells and whistles, but you're looking at over $1,200 for a full setup. And that's serious money. On the other end, you've got more affordable mesh kits that claim Wi-Fi 7 support, but often cut quarters, skipping the full six gigahertz bands, limiting channel width, or leaving out multi-link support altogether. So even if the box says Wi-Fi 7, you're not really getting the full experience. The BE-1000 strikes a solid balance. At around $450, it gives you true tri-band Wi-Fi 7 with support for multi-gig speeds, wired and wireless backhaul, multi-link operation, and some handy features like USB network storage and dedicated IoT networking. For most homes, especially those juggling dozens of smart devices, multiple floors, and bandwidth hungry users, it's a very capable system without the ultra premium price tag. Now, if your internet service is still under one gigabit per second and you're in a small apartment, you might not see a huge leap forward going from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7. In that case, a cheaper Wi-Fi 6E system could be a better fit for your budget. But if you're already pushing a multi-gigabit connection or you're just tired of signal drops and sluggish speeds when you walk upstairs or into the garage, then a setup like this is absolutely makes sense. Of course, cost is always part of the equation. At $15 a month, the equipment rental fee for my ISP might not seem like a lot, but over time it adds up fast. While it'll take about two and a half years for this system to pay for itself, I've already been with the same provider for over 13 years. That means I've spent more than $2,300 renting equipment I don't even own. And in hindsight, that's just painful. So yeah, for me, a mesh system like this Deco BE-1000 isn't just a tech upgrade, it's a financial one too. And based on the performance I'm seeing so far, I don't plan on going back. If you found this review helpful, give it a thumbs up. It really helps more than you might think. And if you want to see more deep dive reviews like this, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.